today or tonight good, thank you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i have the great good fortune to bring to you tonight uh, miss alex hills who is an activist for human liberty an activist for freedom press i'm sure and uh alex why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, i understand you're both a talented musician as well as a human rights activist um let us tell us a little bit about who alex Okay, um, I'm completely an accidental activist, I would call myself. I um, have been a musician for years and years, and I've attended protests and played for protests many times, but um, always cheering uh, on the internet and sort of really just doing things from the background, not really um, taking a lead. But then about a year ago, um, I witnessed the violinist in London, um, Alex Taylor, getting thrown off the streets outside the London Embassy for playing Walsing Matilda. Um, um, it was Australia Day. He was Australian and he was in London. And uh, just simply playing Walsing Matilda had him thrown off the streets um, by the armed task force, I'll have you, <laughs> um, which was ridiculous. And, of course, that got me thinking. He had um, managed to break into uh, mainstream media, which is incredibly hard to do, especially with anything that's positive towards Assange. Um, and um, so I was incredibly inspired by that. I started to get a little bit more interested. I mean, I'd say that my activism started in the Bernie days, though. Um, I was a major Bernie um, supporter. I was in pretty much every Facebook group. Um, and even back in those days, I noticed, particularly in New Zealand, we were suffering from quite bad censorship and algorithms. Um, I noticed it before my American counterparts did. Um, and in fact, they used to say I was just being paranoid, but now I think they're all in, in concur, <laughs> they all concur with me that that's actually what's going on. Um, and perhaps New Zealand is a wonderful place to test out new censorship laws and all that sort of stuff, um, surrounding the truth that was published about Hillary, um, really the fact that she was quite a war criminal herself and that the choice between Trump and Hillary was just Abom abominable. I mean, like like uh, Assange says, it's gonorrhea versus cholera, isn't it? <laughs> um, and so I guess back in those days, that's what really enraged me, that we can safely say that there's not another media organisation that can compare with it in terms of um, delivering the truth. Um, yeah, and so around about a year ago, I started asking around um, through the Internet Party in New Zealand and a few other minor groups that I knew here, TPP, I, I was asking if anyone was going to protest for the global uh, June 19th, um, which was the sixth year anniversary of his stay in the embassy last year. And literally, there were a lot of people in the background here doing work, but there, no one was willing to get out and be the face of Assange and WikiLeaks. Um, and I just, it really enraged me again. And I thought, well, someone's got to do it. Even if it's just me with a sign, well, this was my sign, um, yeah, so I thought I'll just turn up and I'll try and get as many people to come. Um, and little did I know, I started to use the music and the violin and sometimes the violin with the hula hoop and all sorts of crazy things to kind of get attention. Um, and it seems to have gone wildfire. I mean, um, my Facebook, my Twitter, um, yeah, it, it's surprising. My YouTube even <laughs> to some extent. It was, it was a surprising reaction. I never thought that I would be a good activist. So once I realized that I actually seem to have a talent for getting attention um, and making a fool out of myself, not being afraid to speak out and say what I feel is the truth here. Um, and I know a lot of people are particular. I mean, I'm in Wellington. Um, a lot of my friends are in Canberra. Um, they're stuck in government jobs or they have government clients. It's incredibly hard to speak out. Um, and I'm in a really, really privileged position where I am, I have my own business. I'm an architect. So, um, I, I'm able to work on my own, which has helped me being able to speak out, which I, I don't know if I'd be able to do otherwise. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, many of us have come through, uh, to the world of activism through unusual routes. Um, I, I started myself when I was in high school. I was a uh, very much uh, an appreciator of uh, Native American culture. Oh. And I saw 
uh, just even as a young person in school still, um, I saw a direct connection between the way uh, Native Americans were treated and the way African Americans were treated. Right. And it seemed to me beyond question, how could uh, Dr. King's work not be understood for not just freeing and improving the situation for African Americans, but improving it for all Americans. We were all going to benefit when people were treated better. So, so that was the first thing that galvanized my own interests. And then, of course, the Vietnam War, which was easily to understand as a racist war for, for resources. Mm. And uh, all the rah-rah and the fake patriotism that was ginned up to get people involved, to get people to feel good about destroying a country to save it. Um, yeah. That seemed to me completely absurd. So I've been I've been in the fray for a long time, and uh, I've been graced with the, the ability to write and the ability to do cartooning. So I've been cartooning for human rights against the wars for a, for, for too darn long anyway. Um, Wonderful. What, um, you know, for people who let's say, are on the fence or don't really understand the issues involved with uh, Julian. Um, Why don't you talk about what's most important about uh, the work of Julian Assange, the work of WikiLeaks? Um, What service have they provided, not just America or Europe or Australia and New Zealand, but what, what do you understand is the work of WikiLeaks? Well, I mean, it's wide and varied. I mean, I think pretty much any issue that you can be concerned about. I, I came originally, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a green architect. Um, I've, I've always taught and studied and tried to put forward green principles in architecture. And so environmental activism was absolutely fundamental for me and um, being part of green parties over here and, and helping them as much as I can um, and really any it came down to the fact that I realized that I cannot um, be an activist for environmental causes while governments are able to be lobbied they're able to be legally bribed there is no transparency there is no power held to account by journalists and more and more today I mean when I was a kid When I was growing up, even on the TV news, you would have two sides of a story. Um, You'd have two narratives and you might have two experts experts, uh, arguing the case. This simply isn't the case anymore. (laughs) We are not here. We are in a post-truth world and it's really depressing. And I'd say we're possibly, as Susie Dawson said today on Unity for J Vigil, we're in a post-law world at this stage. I mean, Britain is completely ignoring the laws here. They've had two UN rulings which have determined that Julian was arbitrarily detained that he was illegally detained by UK, US and Australia, doing nothing, by the way, about their own citizen, um, and that he needed to be freed and, and compensated immediately. And, and basically that's been completely ignored. On top of that, medical professionals have gone in um, a couple of years ago now and said that he needed urgent medical care. Now, as I understand it, he has been in Belmarsh now for two weeks And he has not received any medical care, although I still need that confirmed. But as far as I'm aware, it took a while for for, for his lawyers to even be allowed to access, apart from the very first day. I mean, we literally have lost habeas corpus. We've lost privacy. We've lost. And so if we carry on this way, we're allowing the war criminals to carry on persecuting because they're still in power. They're still sitting in Washington. I'm not just talking about Republicans. And this is the thing that I don't think Americans are all fully getting is that it's not just Republicans. It is very much Democrats. And if if anything, I can say that the last two years of Russiagate um, in in, in American media has been a bit of a disgrace to people around the world looking on because – what we should be arguing about here is Trump's awful policies, his disgusting policies, not red baiting and trying to make war with Russia while <laughs> criticizing Trump. And I've had a lot to say about Russia Gate because I really feel that this has really been um, a big mistake. And um, the, the three reasons I feel that that's been perpetrated is because they had to hide the fact that democracy was broken in America. And I mean, as a New Zealand citizen, 
we are vassal states of the US and the UK. We have no choice about our foreign policy and wars and what we fund. We pay millions to the Clinton Foundation, millions. I mean, I think Australia was 88 million. Um, New Zealand was something in the realm of about 15, 20 million. Um, and I know those sounds like small amounts, but when we're talking about um, Saudi Arabia paying Hillary 150 million, I mean, weapons deals, God knows what, I think um, it's a bit ridiculous. And so we don't have a vote here. <laughs> so I get very noisy about American politics and I don't really say much about New Zealand politics or Australian politics because really... It, we are powerless to do anything. It's quite, it feels quite futile. So th this is why I, I direct my attack at where I feel that we need to try and make improvements. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, there's, there's an awful lot to say uh, about how important WikiLeaks is. Um, for instance, from my environmental perspective, not many people know that Chelsea Manning, her leak, could have actually stopped the BP Mobile Exxon disaster happening. Not many people realise that. Now, if journalists had done their job and if it wasn't such a taboo to publish <laughs> WikiLeaks materials and actually work with them, um, I mean, like everyone's done it, New York Times, Washington Post, everyone's published WikiLeaks data, but if it wasn't such a problem, perhaps those leaks that Chelsea Manning had come out with would have been looked at and we would have been able to avoid that horrific disaster. So it, it isn't really just about corruption or just about you know, America's democracy. It's about the whole world's ability to react to issues. And well, you're, you're we are very right. much missing the point. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is obvious to many of us uh, progressives here, uh, obviously not all, but many, that uh, one of the things that's been lost in the wash, uh, I mean, true, the Trump policies are horrendous across the board. He has brought uh, the foxes in to guard the chicken coops again oh. and again and again. Gina. And, yeah. And, and one of the things that, that I, I agree with you 100 percent on, especially has been sort of lost in the mix is, yes, there's there's a, you know, a degree of outrage about the let's say the, the Clinton hand hack, however, that material surfaced. But one of the things that's really not been discussed much is some of the information contained in that. And yes, uh, the, the people who supported progressive issues, supported Bernie supported the Green Party here. You know, yes, there was a degree of outrage, but but a lot of that information really never got discussed because the focus was more on the loss to Bernie, the theft of Bernie. And, and Americans, by and large, still believe the myth that we are a government of the people and do not understand the power of the international oligarchs. And I think you make that point very well, that you as New Zealanders really are a vassal state, aptly put, aptly put indeed. And I do want, if we have time to, for you to explore a little bit, you mentioned the censorship there mm. in New Zealand. And yeah. <clears throat> many Americans have so little uh, geographical knowledge, so little geopolitical knowledge, and I'd like you to help us understand that a little bit better right. because we know the censorship issues here. We know what Snowden has told us. We know what Kiriakou has told us and, uh, this, these are critical, critical issues. And you're right, we do suffer under an international oligarch group. Um, mm. but, but let's stay with Julian just for a little bit longer. You know, the work of Chelsea Manning, the work of Julian Assange to get these messages out has been so important. And, and they have oh. revealed so much, uh, as Daniel Ellsberg has said, very much comparable to the Pentagon Papers in their revelations. Um, let me ask you, what are your hopes for Julian in this next period? Do you think he's going to be taken from Britain to the, to America to stand trial? Yes, absolutely. And I, I think that these charges that we're hearing about now are just the tip of the iceberg. And in fact, Obama, we know, wouldn't have pr prosecuted because he knew of the danger to journalism, the danger to free press. I mean, imagine... If this precedent is allowed to carry on, can you imagine if Saudi Arabia says, oh, I'm going to take a foreign journalist, because Assange is from Australia, I'm going to ask for this foreign journalist to be extradited, I won't expect any problem with it, and I will bring him here and make him subject to my laws, because I don't like what he published about my evil regime. You know, we can imagine the scenario, and this is exactly what <laughs> America's doing, and do they realize this is what they're doing? 
Um, and I know a lot of Trump voters who are still holding on. I've heard figures like 20% of Trump's voters have dropped him over Assange at the moment, uh, it seems like, which is wonderful news. <laughs> um, I'm delighted. Um, as long as there's a good candidate in the Democrats to work with, but um, we'll come to that later. Um, but, yeah, I... I, I don't know. I mean, basically, the, the judge that ruled in UK for his magistrate's hearing in that very brief hearing where the open hearing, uh, he was called a narcissist by the very judge supposedly being um, non-biased. I mean, I, I think that that would have turned out of court almost immediately if we were able to appeal if there was any kind of normality here, but there isn't because basically the war criminals are still in power in Britain and in Australia yeah. and in America yeah. and in the media organisations, in the head of every single media organisation, there is another war criminal. I'm sorry, but that is where we are. And um, they have all been exposed by Assange and Manning and all the other, Wiki all the other WikiLeaks releases, um, which have never, ever c turned out to be anything but truth. So... They are embarrassed. They cannot have him walk free because he is actually one of the human beings who's read the most classified documents in, in, in existence. So you can imagine the sensitive things that he hasn't published because he didn't want to risk anyone's lives. Or um, And, in fact, the Pentagon confirmed that no one's life has been harmed by WikiLeaks releases. I better put that out there because that's a, a common smear of Assange. Um yeah, I mean, this whole thing of blaming Assange for Hillary, which I really feel this has come down to, um, is a joke because what we're, what we're blaming him for is, is revealing the truth about Hillary. Um, and I'm still actually... An, an ironic position, that's it, for sure. It, that's it's for sure. crazy. And I think if they actually just stepped out of themselves for a minute and looked in, they'd just see how crazy it was. Um, now, one of the things that worries me is that should he come to this country for a trial, I'm afraid they're going to seal the court. They won't mm. allow him to speak. And, and because, as you said, he has so much more to tell. And while there is a criticism here, even on the left, and, and it's a shame, uh, because, as you said, nothing has been proven that WikiLeaks has published is false. Um, that the the he's basically accused of carrying water for Trump, or uh, siding with the enemies of of Clinton and therefore America, and and has helped us get Trump. I think that's that's not a positive thing, and it, it fails to comprehend what was trying to be said about Hillary, what was trying to say about the Clinton people, that the corruption was tremendous, that the war making the the exploitation was tremendous and and that's uh that's a tough thing to say but i think those of us who support mr assange support the work of wikileaks support the work of whistleblowers mm. and whistleblowers are still while while there's lip service paid to protecting them in in practical fact they're not protected at all no. um, i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the censorship issues yeah. because we have them here largely speaking, limited by dollars, that, that if the story doesn't make money for the sponsors, they're just not going to cover it. We've basically lost an international news component for our news. It's just not covered, except in the progressive press. That's why I'm talking to you. Mm. Um, can you talk a little bit about the censorship that you faced in New Zealand? Yeah. Well, I had some interesting things happen um, during the Bernie. Um, it was just great to see Americans embracing even slightly something slightly left of centre. For us in the rest of the world, I don't think most people realise, but the Democrats are, are pretty much right wing for us. <laughs> so, um, you know, just to see that happening and everyone getting so excited um, and then to see it slowly degrade down and everyone getting really distraught by the cheating and and some of the cheating i saw was extraordinary and it hasn't been covered on any mainstream news that i can see um some of the the, the things that happened at the convention even uh, really really shocking but anyway so it was around about that time when i was posting um i i had probably a thousand followers not not that many but um a lot of them were real friends and what i noticed was anything kitten 
anything that, without any keywords in it, anything sort of a banal status update, I would have 50 or 60 likes quite easily or, you know, at least 30 if it was a boring one. <laughs> you know, I would have a little bit of exposure. And um, if I posted the slightest political thing, um, zero, literally zero. For a while it took them a little while to sort the algorithm out. So it was really blatantly obvious for me. And I got really, really angry. I started telling people they thought I was being paranoid. But um, I believe that, that because New Zealand is quite, you know, happy to not complain. I mean, British complain. I'm, I'm, I'm half British, half. God, I'm actually triple, triple citizenship. So Australian, Kiwi and British. I've got three passports. So British people complain. We're really good at it. Um, and so I was just outraged and no one <laughs> believed me. A uh, little bit later on, I, I wrote a post that said, um, vote for Hillary so that she can profit from Genie Energy in Syria. And, you know, uh, it was a completely sarcastic post. And, do you know, it got pinned to the top of my Facebook profile for about three months during the election season. I'm I, sure that was my, a coincidence. My personal page. I had no knowledge of how you would even pin a post to the top of your personal page. Yet... Everyone was seeing it because it said, vote for Hillary, so. Da, 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 da. And I guess the algorithm didn't get the sarcasm, you know, nor the Syria references or any of that stuff. And so, yeah, and it just it just really revealed it to me. Um, but, but, yeah, so now the censorship is, is quite, quite rife, particularly after Christchurch. Now, um, I happen to believe that um, – the whole distrust of the media is causing these factions, these hate groups, these the, this nastiness to brew, this hopelessness, because people have lost hope in media, in government. There, there isn't that um, rock anymore <laughs> to hold on to. And so people are flagging about. Now, this Christchurch terrorist, whoever he was from Australia, apparently, um, if he had been a WikiLeaks activist, he would have been on the radar. He would have been watched 24-7. You know, we know that. And yet, what is WikiLeaks activists saying? No, nothing really that bad, just a little bit anti-government perhaps, but not really anything illegal, nothing hate, nothing you can't possibly say that what I'm saying is hate. I mean, of course, I've been called a Trump supporter and all sorts of things for, su for supporting Assange, but I try to defend my position. But it's quite tough because people are paralyzed by this sort of partisan um, feeling. So now after Christchurch, what's really interesting, now I'm pretty happy about changes in gun laws so that we can't have automatic rifles as long as, you know, there are hunters here who go out in the bush and as long as they can enjoy a free, free hunting and we don't expect to have every citizen armed to the hilt. Yeah, that's great. I'm really proud of Jacinda for doing that. And I'm really proud of the way she handled herself. Um, but, <laughs> huge but, was that they immediately censored um, 4chan and 8chan. Now, those are places where people go when anti-war activists have been thrown off Facebook and they've been thrown off Twitter and they can't operate anymore and so they tend to go to 4chan and 8chan because that's somewhere where they can still operate now you've just pushed everything into the dark web by getting rid of that because there's no there's nowhere to go you know and you're pushing it all into under the carpet and thinking it's not going to be a problem but of course it is so i'm i'm very objective i'm very i'm objecting very much to the censorship but not so much to the um gun laws i actually have sympathy for um is it the second amendment in America, is it? The, yeah. I have sympathy for people at the moment because I can see that they, they've got a government that they think can rise up against them at any point. They're, they're on the defensive, and I, f I feel that that's why people are so, I mean, apart from the NRA and all the corrupt lobbyists and all that rubbish, but, you know, I feel that's why people defend the Second Amendment in America, and I have a lot of time to listen to them, even though I'm anti-gun as, as such, you know? Um, anyway, you know, there's a whole lot of that, but I will say that um, New Zealand certainly seems to be the test bed of any kind of censorship. And if I get wind of any other stuff coming along the windpipe, I will tell you. I'll definitely come and tell you. But um, well, I, I would like you to just, just uh, in the spirit of artist to artist, uh, when you get a chance, please send me some of your MP3s so that yep. we can enjoy some of the music that is also Alex Hill. Yeah. And, uh, 
I, I think some of the best artists uh, are ones that are, take their, their, the heart that they feel for the world, the love that they feel for humanity in their art, and, and it works in their politics as well. So I, I really salute you for that. Thank you. As we wrap up uh, our little interview today, let me ask you, <clears throat> you've mentioned to me offline that there has been, uh, that as you say, that it's a little timid. People are a little concerned about coming out supporting Julian. Is, is there a support Julian movement in yeah. New Zealand, in Australia? What, what's, what is, what's going on? What are they trying to what? do? Have they spoken to the government? What, what kind of reaction are they getting? Well, we're all over the world and we're all in different groups. Um, and one big one, maybe a couple of big ones, actually. Um, it depends what platform you're on. Um, the, the largest one and the most successful one is a non-partisan group called Unity 4J. Um, and that is um, run by the likes of Joe Lauria from Consortium um, News at the moment. Um, before that, and, and also Elizabeth Lee Voss, who was Disobedient Media. Um, and Susie Dawson, who is Internet um, Party New Zealand um, leader, who had to actually escape to Russia. So that shows you also what, what yeah. New Zealand isn't as perfect as everyone feels that it might be. But, um, yeah, there are an awful lot of groups around the world. I mean, um, there are a whole swathe of Facebook groups called Actions for Assange with the, with the country name or the city name. Um, there are um, Wikileaks Coalition, and co there's Pray for Assange, there's Mothers for Assange, there is, I mean, basically there's endless, endless groups out there. The, the one that really brings everyone together and I believe is is the most fun you know functional to, to get you started and then you might find your little um, country group and then start working with them and, and, and check into the global group every now and then is the Unity 4J. So it's U-N-I-T-Y 4 and then J, number 4 and then letter J. Um, well, what else is there? There, there? there are a whole bunch of groups out there. Um, musically, what, what you were talking about, I can definitely give you a couple of tracks. Of, of what I've been doing, um, the, the London violinist who I did um, meet on on um, Twitter, I actually messaged him and said, "Oh, you've inspired me to start protesting using my violin." He um, sent me a song, and I released it at Christmas time, and it's called "Let the Light In." That's a Unity 4J song, um, oh, nice. and that did incredibly well. So it's like a New Zealand, a London violin, Assange violin duet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also got the most beautiful singer and then Kathy Vogan who's an Australian WikiLeaks long time support so she made it into a much more professional version of my video um, and um, before that um, my mate my Tim Timothy my um, mate in Free Assange NZ which is my particular group in New Zealand that focuses on actions on the ground here he and I um, came up with a Julian Assange song sort of little reggae number so very different oh, yeah. from the Christmas number. Um, and, yeah, I think people really love that one. We didn't really mean to uh, issue it. I actually just um, put it out there because people were having a bit of a grumpy day in the activism world. And my colleague didn't want to be in the picture because she, she wasn't comfortable. So I asked her to drum, and we got a big stuffed toy lion. Ian, can you bring me my lion um we <laughs> a stuffed toy lion and the lion drummed in the video and it was literally the second time we'd ever ever played the song it was a jam and it was still kind of being worked out as we played it and i thought oh that video is so much fun with a puppet playing the drums i'm just going to put it out there anyway and just see what people like um and everyone retweeted it. it's like wikileaks retweeted it and julian assange's account tweeted it even though he didn't have internet access but you know um it went completely crazy and it was really funny because it was such a jam and i was a little bit embarrassed but now we've we've mastered it and we did it again at the wellington protest last week and you can find that pinned to my twitter um which is greenweaver arch so g-r-e-e-n-w-e-a-v-e-r a R C H. It's embarrassing because it's my work. <laughs> it's my work Twitter, Greenweaver Architecture. So, uh, well, thank anyway, you so it's much. Dear. Sorry. Well, it's been wonderful talking to you. It's good to hear the voice of the good people of New Zealand standing up for press freedom, standing up for the truth. Thank you so very much, Alex, Pleasure. for joining me. And uh, we'll publish this on YouTube as well as on the show. So, 
bravo to you, and I Wonderful. look forward to hearing some of your tunes, okay? Wonderful. I'll share it widely. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Chasing him yesterday, and he had to stow himself away. He had to take extreme caution because they were very strong.
Well done. Well done. I think we started our show with a bit of magic. Now the story is, it concerns uh, Alex's fellow musician in London, the other violinist who, who composed and played that beautiful song at the beginning. He tried to play this song outside the Ecuadorian embassy and he was forbidden to do so. So now Alex is going to play that song for Julian right now in Sydney, but she's going out to the world. So she's gonna, this is a homage to Alex Taylor as well as the wonderful Julian Assange and the essential WikiLeaks. Julian! Julian! Mm -hmm. 